high, Psalm 50. When you jump into Psalm 50, you find that God is calling all the earth to listen into, uh, if you like, calling them into a courtroom. He's the judge and his people are the defendants. Look at some of the first verses in the psalm. The mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. He calls the heavens above and to the earth uh, that he may judge his people. The heavens declare his righteousness for God himself is judge. It's interesting when you get that scene set that God is going to bring uh, an indictment or an accusation against his people. It kind of makes the whole setting shift. For example, if you look down at verses 10 and 11 and just pluck them out of the context, every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills and all that moves in the field is mine. Sounds kind of positive, right? God owns everything. But in its context, we always want to read details in their context. In the context here, God is bringing an accusation against his people that they're bringing offerings to him. They're making sacrifices, but it's sort of formulaic. They're going through the motions, but their heart is not in it. Notice what he says, verse 8, not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. They were bringing the offerings. They were doing the rituals. And yet God says, I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your fold, for every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and its fullness are mine. This, this mine language that God is using here. What he's saying to them is, look, you've lost the heart, you've lost the point of making the offerings and making the sacrifices. I don't actually need the animals because I own them anyway. You can't pay me. You can't pay me back. You can't buy my uh, affection or attention or anything like that. No, the people had kind of fallen into a religious ritual, something that's very easy for us to do. He goes on and finishes off the accusation with the instruction, offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. That's from the inside out, right? That's got to be heartfelt. Perform your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. God is the initiator. He works in our lives and our response is to glorify him. And so he's saying to them here, just going through the ritual, doing the religious thing isn't enough. It doesn't work, it doesn't achieve anything because I don't need anything anyway. Instead, let me work in your life. See what I've done for you and then respond with thanksgiving. Respond by glorifying me. The next section, the final section of the psalm, which you're uh, going to see when you read through it, he talks about hypocrisy, that they're worshipping God while at the same time mixed up in all sorts of sins. Mark this then, he says at the end of the section, you who forget God, lest I tear you apart and there be none to deliver. The one who offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies me. To one who orders his way rightly, I will show the salvation of God. God wants our lives to line up with our confession. He wants our lives to line up with our worship. It's not enough to go through the rituals of worship. If we were going to apply this psalm today, we wouldn't think so much in terms of sacrificing animals, but we might think about attending church, giving money to the offering, right? That we're going through the motions and looking very Christian. But God stands as judge over that kind of empty religiosity and instead invites us to respond to him from the heart, to glorify him for what he's done. Not giving as if he needs our stuff, but giving because we can't help but respond to what he's done for us. Psalm 50 is a great psalm. It's like a mirror uh, that uh, we can look into and see where we're at. Uh, are there elements of ritualistic kind of religiousness creeping in? Are, are we becoming a bit hypocritical, claiming to live for God, but not really living for God? Look at Psalm 50. Allow it to convict your heart. Pray to God about what you see. 
and then share it with others for their encouragement. Maybe share your testimony of how Psalm 50 has challenged you to encourage them to live for God too. See you next time.